let's move on to, well, you know what? I'm going to do this and I'm gonna to try to reuse some of this code. And, um, oh, no, I'm not, uh, it'll be fine. Okay, so there, there's this function called sigmoid. It shows up a lot. And uh, you're gonna to have to learn it in the DSI. So let's just write it. Sigmoid of uh, some value, uh, let's just call it x. Often you'll see it as x. Um, x can be a vector. We're not gonna think about it like a vector. We're gonna think about it as a scalar value. So it's a single value. Um, and we're probably gonna approach this from negative 10 to 10 or something like that, similar to the polynomial function. So this is just gonna return uh, one divided by um, one plus, uh, so I'm gonna import uh, from math import E, I believe that's it. Um, so this is Euler's, uh, Euler's totient, Euler's number. Um, and this is gonna be to the negative x. So uh, sigmoid f of x equals one over one plus e to the negative x. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good one to memorize um, if you get a chance. Really simple, comes up a lot. And there are a lot of concepts in neural nets where, uh, you know, that, that are built from sigmoid. So we're gonna think about uh, sigmoid as yielding a probability. And we're not gonna get too deep into that, but um, something to look up later uh, or get with me about is logistic regression. Um, you know, after you pass your, uh, pass your technical interview, talk with me about logistic regression and I can give you some resources and walk you through some, you know, basics of it. So uh, again, we're gonna just do a very simple kind of analysis. And this is going to be dealing with a range. So um, let's do sigmoid dictionary and we're going to, um, you know, we don't need to pass anything in here. We're just gonna create that dictionary accumulator again. And we're gonna say, um, uh, we need, oh, sorry, we do need to pass something in. We're gonna create a parameter for low X and we'll create high X. And we're going to say, for i in range, hmm. We might want to get more granular than this, but that's okay. Let's not do. Let's not get granular yet. Uh, so let's just say for i in range, um, low x to high x. I think we probably could have reused the code, but that's okay. Um, we're going to call out to sigmoid, so we're going to say d sub. Um, sorry, for x in range. d sub x is going to get a sigmoid of x. And we should be able to, um, you know, for k, v, this should, get, this should get boring, redundant, right? For k, uh, v in uh, the sigmoid dictionary dot items. Uh, you know what, I'll just go ahead and pull this out separately, so. So for KV in sig dict dot items, we're gonna print the F string of K V and that should get us something if there isn't a glaring error somewhere. Two yes, positional sir. require low X high X, of course. Yes, um, negative 10 to 10 and none type. Am I not returning something somewhere? Return D. Oh, thank you. Yep. Oh, I don't need that. Huh. You're not returning anything in the function of sig dictionary. You have oh. to return it. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so here's a bunch of values. And we can kind of get an idea of sigmoid by looking at this. So if, you're, if, you're, if you wanna close your eyes and imagine a plot, if you go negative 10, um, then you get this tiny, tiny number, right? Um, 
and the number is kind of steadily getting larger, right? So you get this curve up, and then at zero, you get 0 0.5 on the y-axis. And then you sort of gradually, so this is uh, often, this is just called an S-curve. Sigmoid curve, S-curve looks like an S. So uh, pretty easy to remember in that way. Um, we could get more granular with this. We could um, create a range that has, uh, you know, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, et cetera. But let's not do that. That's kind of out of the scope of what we're talking about here. Um, so one of the ideas here is that, you know, you can throw a number into sigmoid and you get something like a probability out of it. And uh, we use it like a probability. And you'll see that. And so if you're trying to make a prediction, um, you know, you might predict a one class or a zero class. And what I might say here is that, okay, anything with a probability greater than 0.5 is in the one class. Everything with a probability less than 0.5 is in the zero class. So maybe we're talking uh, weights of cats and dogs. Um, not that there's negative um, weights for cats and dogs, but uh, you know, we'd have some modification of this in order to accommodate for that. We'd scale it differently. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a class. I'm going to make a threshold. So we've got this sigdict, and I'm going to comment this out, and I'm going to say, uh, so let's thresh sigmoid on some sigmoid dictionary. And uh, we need a threshold. And I'm going to set that by default to 0.5. And I'm going to say, OK, well, um, for uh, I'll just do this. We'll make another accumulator, right? So constantly making dictionary accumulators. For KV in um, sigdict dot items. Again, it's going to get boring, but boring in a good way. And I'm going to say, well, D sub K, I'm going to just assign this, um, is going to get one in some case. D sub K is going to get zero in another case. So our first case is if V less than thresh, sorry, greater than thresh. Then d sub k is going to get 1. Else, d sub k is going to get 0. Then I will return d, and we can run this. And so I'll call this uh, thresh dict. It's going to get the threshold of that sigmoid dictionary. And we can kind of say something about this, uh, which is cool. Something we can do. Um, this is going to be, instead of sigmoid dict, we're going to get uh, thresh dict. So. so this is kind of cool. It might not be uh, entirely helpful. Um, Maybe in this case, uh, I would adjust this a little bit and say uh, greater than or equal to threshold. Um, we're going to assume, oops, we're going to assume that zero is, uh, is enough, like 0.5. We're going to assume that 0.5 is enough. And so anything below zero, we put it in the zero class. Everything above zero, uh, sorry, everything zero and above, we put in the one class. So we can adjust this threshold. Let's change it to 0.8. And run this. And suddenly, uh, you know, you have, to, you have to have a higher achievement of probability. But still, we're only including a couple more. So let's go 0.99. And see what that does. Um, notice we're getting more zeros. So let's take this concept a little bit further and say um, we're going to reuse this for loop again. 
and I'm gonna say um, uh, def um, sigmoid counts, and we're gonna pass in a couple things. We're gonna pass in the um, let's pass in the sigmoid dictionary. Let's pass in the original, and we'll pass in a threshold. I'm gonna set that back to 0.5 just to be. All right, so sigmoid counts. Um, oh yeah, so again, dictionary accumulator, and we're going to again traverse the sigmoid dictionary. So for KB in sigdict dot items, and uh, in this case, we actually want to, um, oh, you know what? We want the, we want the thresh dict, don't we? That makes way more sense. Um, and in that case, we don't need the threshold. So let's do that. Uh, so for KV in this threshold dictionary, we're going to use, we're gonna use V instead. We're going to make a dictionary that only has two items. It, it's only going to have one and zero as a key. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to say uh, for KV and uh, threshold dict items, uh, let's do if V not in D. I'm going to prime this because there's going to be multiple instances and we're going to build out on it. So uh, if it's not, then I'm gonna say D sub V. It's gonna get an empty list because I'm going to append the items uh, that fall on either side of the threshold. And we're gonna say D sub V dot append and we're gonna append the key. And return D. And hopefully that does what we expect it to. There might be a logical error in there that I am not seeing, but we'll find out. In sigmoid.counts function object has no attribute items. Of course it doesn't. Oh, yeah. Let's just throw that in there. Ah, cool. I'll run that again in a more clear. Oh. All right. So now we can see all the values that give us uh, that threshold to zero and all the values that threshold to one. Um, if I change this to 0.99, uh, if I change that threshold, then we're going to see something different. And if we wanted, uh, instead, I could print the number of values, right? I could just put length around the value. And there's, you know, 15, 15 of these fall into uh, the zero class, six fall into the one class. So in this case, I took, I took the dictionary results and I modified them pretty heavily. So uh, I'm just gonna walk back through this really quick. Um, you know, we defined sigmoid that sigmoid operation, we um, looked at, uh, we created a dictionary of the, the probabilities for sigmoid, um, and we loaded them into sigdict for the range negative 10 to 10. And then we built a thresholded dictionary uh, using this thresh sigmoid, and that gave us classes, right, uh, based on some threshold that we set. Like it has to be 0.99, uh, it has to be 0.99. If it's not over, if it's not 0.99 or higher, then um, then it's a zero class, right? And then we just looked at the counts between them. So this is sort of like a, a little bit more analysis, but um, you know, this is the kind of thing that you want to be able to do. You want to be able to take these dictionaries and manip manipulate them into other dictionaries that tell you new things. Cool. So I'm going to stop there for a second.